Hi folks and welcome to another episode of The Art of Engineering. This is going to be a short one about the QRS Slow Code Night. I won't call it a net. It uh, happens on 80 and 40 metres on Tuesday nights. And if you'd like the details of all of that great stuff that happens on the night, you can go to QRZ to the page of VK2KI, Mark Bosma, and there is a link there to get yourself access to the newsletter, which is a fantastic newsletter. People basically talk about what happened on the night and upload pictures of gear and all that, all those sexy pictures of uh, the keys they're using and all that great stuff. If you're into CW, it's a great thing to do. Well, as luck would have it, I managed to land my first QSO straight out of the gate with another tube rig. And that was uh, Andy in South Australia, VK5LA. And he was on his Johnson Viking transmitter. Mix of old and new as well. He was listening on an online SDR from what I understand. And I, of course, was on the, uh, the one tuba. Uh, listening on my realistic receiver. So I was in the 1960s. He was probably a lot earlier than that. And we proceeded to have a great little QSO. Unfortunately, technology let me down. We had no sound. But uh, he and I were very, very chuffed that uh, we managed to work uh, rig to rig using the wonders of bottles, vacuum tubes, thermionic valves. Very exciting. We don't seem to be getting anywhere with 5 watts, so we're going to crank up the QRP Labs 40 watt amp and see if we can uh, land ourselves a QSO to find that power cord. The power cord back here that's got uh, 20 volts written on it. Turn the light on. Nearly 50 watts out on this band via this wonderful little amplifier. It's running on a laptop. Uh, supply 19 volts. I'm going to make sure I don't plug it in. It's got a big warning sign on it. And this is putting out 5 watts. And that's my speaker that I've installed. Let's give it a crack. Okay, folks, well, let's just do a little bit of a, a tour of the keys in the shack. And first cab off the rank is this wonderful key that I've got here. And it is a high mount, Japanese made. This is the sort of key that quite often I would see on the ships that I was on. And it is a beautiful key. It's got a marble base. It has a small crack in it, which I knew about. I bought this from uh, actually a, an Australian a gentleman who was selling radio. I think it was the same place that I got my... AV 1000 meter. They, they were very honest about the small amount of damage, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, a small blemish like that is not a problem. The key operates fantastically. And this is the one that I operate on my TS520. And the TS520 is featured in many, many videos, but this is a beautiful key for that, uh, for that rig. And obviously right at the beginning of the channel's life, when I was trying to get on the air with my single transistor QRPP, transmitter that was putting out milliwatts i didn't have a key i was looking at secondhand prices at the time i was a bit uh, gun shy about spending money on on keys i no longer have that problem <laughs> buying keys online but uh, i built this from bits and bobs from bunnings that part here the main part is actually a kitchen door handle that's a kitchen door knob and then the mechanism of the hinge is actually something that's supposed to hold a door open so all parts that i got from bunnings and it works and it works well as you saw in that video with the one tuba, uh, this is a more recent acquisition. There's a video on my channel called Pimp My Key, and it's from the Ukraine. 
and we've laser actually call sign and we've used a um, router table to make it very very pretty so that's that key and that quite often happens for qrp uh, transceivers that i've got and i'll swing the i'll swing the camera around and this is another high mount that i've got and that's the uh, high mount that i use on my Hermes Light SDR transceiver. And it's a fantastic key. It's got a heavy metal base, this one, rather than the uh, marble base. Lovely action. And I'm very, very happy with that key. As I am with, I think, all of my keys. They're like my little children. Don't tell my son that. I do love my son more than my keys. A little bit more. And over here, we have, and I've been hankering for one of these for such a long time. Just, I love the look of it. It's called a boat key. And uh, it is the key that was used during World War II on the Lancaster bombers and various other aircraft. And they're renowned to have a very, very stiff action. And that is not a design fault. It's actually a design feature. Because obviously in aircraft, you've got a lot of uh, turbulence and and people are trying to blast you out of the air, so there'd be a lot of flak in the air and a lot of turbulence caused by that as well. So that was a way of making sure that code was sent uh, successfully. Just so chuffed to have one of these. And finally, the J38 American-style key. Once again, mounted on a base that uh, I, I made at uh, school. I'm very, very happy with this, with this key. It's got a fantastic action. And I've used this in the field as well. It's a great key. Love it. And this was the setup on the night. Uh, we were listening, like I said, on the DX160 realistic single conversion super heterodyne receiver. And transmitting on my single tube, or what I call the AOE one tuber transmitter. It's running a 6V6 tube. It can operate... On crystals, which you can see here, there's an FT243 crystal plugged in. It will also accept HC49 crystals, which plug in over here. And that was great. It runs about three to four watts when I'm running it on a crystal. But if I plug in to the same place where I plug in my HC49 crystals, I can use the VFO. And this VFO that's over here is the uh, QRP Labs VFO teamed with lots of other circuitry to make it drive that uh, transmitter. Tickle it enough to get about watt and a half to two watts on a good day. But as you saw in the video, I was able to work South Australia on that setup. So chuffed that that'll happen. It's just the magic of CW. What you can get away with, the limited amount of power, modest antennas, and you can still have great QSOs and have a lot of fun. And I'll swing around here because this setup I use later on in the night, and it is my QMX Plus. Now, the QMX Plus is an absolute magic rig. It does digital modes, it does CW, and there's now a beta version, and they'll soon have it doing SSB on the standard software as well. Hans Summers at QRP Labs. It's about $230, 12 bands, 160 to 54 megahertz. Hans Summers is an absolute genius. And this is a single band amplifier kit that he provides. It's uh, 50 watts if you run it on a 19 volt laptop supply, or if you run it on the same power as your rig at uh, about 12 volts, you're going to get about 25 odd watts out of it. So either way, it's a, a big step up from QRP power. And if you just need a little bit of extra power on a particular night, that's probably a great option. It's full break-in and it's a great amplifier. You can also use it with the other uh, versions of kits that uh, Hans Summers has. I'll show you a couple of those now. This is uh, the QCX Mini. It's a single band transceiver, uh, CW only. And check the size of that out. It's literally the size of a pack of playing cards. It's a beautiful little rig. Uh, that is one of the um, rigs that I built earlier on and used it a little bit. 
it's got a fantastic receiver in it too. Very quiet, very nice, but uh, not SDR architecture like the QMX. And this, if you want to build something that's not as difficult and, you know, so tiny, this is a, a QCX Plus, and these are also single banders. This is the one I built for 160 meters. Great rigs, just, just fantastic rigs to play with. I cannot recommend the products from QCX Labs more stridently than I do in every single video when I feature them. I uh, also love the fact that Hands allows people and wants people to actually play with this technology and get to know it. Um, you get schematics, you get great instructions to build, and people modify all the time. And this is a modification that I've done to mine. It's um, got a speaker in the top of it and an audio amplifier. All that stuff happens in videos on my channel. Hit the uh, playlist at the end of this video for my hand playlist and you'll be able to see all that good stuff. Well, thank you folks for sticking around right to the end of the video. I hope you can see the magic of CW and you might give it a crack. 7-3 and I'll see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering.